Yo, I'm Sven Bakker and in this video I'm going to talk about Drew Struzan, the artist, illustrator or whatever you might call it, famous for his outstanding drawing and painting skills with mixed media like airbrush and color pencils. For movies like Back to the Future, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, E.T., The Goonies and so on. Also, I'm going to visit his first solo exhibition in a museum ever in Lyon, France. So let's get into the groove. Break it down, three, two, one, sign the Before I dive into the footage of my trip, I want to tell a bit about my art influences and when and what started or restarted the interest in Struzan's work and why he influences or inspires me right at this time. After that, I will go shortly through the book Oeuvre. I will end this video with the footage I shot at the Museum of Cinema and Miniature. If you want to skip parts, I'll post the time schedule in the description below. It has been said that cultural influences are defined between certain ages in your childhood. Musical taste peaks somewhere around your mid-teens. I don't know exactly if this is true, in what circumstances and especially if there's also a definition of the influences of that in later life. But for me growing up my conscious years in the 80s, I can truly say that era defined most of my passions in later life, mostly concentrating on art and music. Art wise, as a young child I was drawing cartoons from a book how to draw or from fantasy, but there wasn't one clear influence. Although the Pink Panther and the Smurfs were definitely early cartoony influences and I was collector of them. The graffiti in Rocksteady Cruise clip, but especially early graffiti pieces in Amsterdam and in a Dutch magazine and some comics by Robert van der Croft caught my attention for continuing drawing for years to come. BMX and skateboarding was like graffiti and music to me. Pure magic, but mostly out of reach. Visits to the only Dutch skateboard shop Rodolfo's and early skateboard posters and magazines influenced me with the colorful graphics by especially Fisi Johnson and Jim Phillips. For more about that, see my video about my Clyde Semma tribute piece and my skateboard childhood. If you would have asked me about persons who were art influencers in my childhood, I would have stuck there. Although complimented by underground artists like Robert Crump, Vaughn Baudet and Dutch artist Peter Pontiac in my mid to late teens. Concerning movies and television series, although we didn't have much channels in the beginning, I was luckily to grow up with iconic series like The A-Team, Bug Rogers, Battlestar Galactica, Knight Rider, Blue Thunder, Dukes of Hazzard, Elf, The Fraggles and especially The Muppet Show. They were so much on TV that I didn't think it was such iconic back then. Movie wise I remember the iconic ones like E.T. The Ghostbusters and the Gremlins. The times of visiting the cinema that I remember back then were Spielberg productions like E.T. with the BMX in it and the Goonies. Back to the Future was shown in elementary school, probably as an end of the year program, with the skateboard scene making impact that's hard to imagine. My parents were pretty late with buying a video player, but I remember renting videotapes with a friend of mine at the video store. What was very appealing to me of that era are certain video covers and posters at the video store and probably in a really small version in the TV guide. Especially those of the Goonies and Police Academy, I can recall. Police Academy 3 had also members of the Bones Brigade skateboarding in it, although I didn't know it at that moment. The actor's portrait on the cover had a special feel to it. The persons looked like the real actors, but the drawn style gave it a strange fictional twist. Or should I say it otherwise? These drawn stylized people with complete bodies and not just a head or a bust looked strangely realistic. With the drawings of these movie posters, I didn't even know if it was painted or drawn or otherwise produced. After going for a career as the drummer, I kind of continued my art passions more heavily. With the internet, my old passions relived as never before and I bought graffiti, skateboard and other art books. Went to expos and started taking drawing and later painting lessons, while picking up graffiti again. 
Although I did some acrylic painting before taking painting lessons, my main goal was to learn oil painting like the old masters and apply this to my own ideas like graffiti and skateboard art. As you might know, oil paint is very forgiving, as it dries very slow. For me, I love to endlessly work on details. Unless I lay a painted canvas for several days in the sun, which we don't have much in the Netherlands, I can reshape forms and shapes for days after laying the foundation. The disadvantage, of course, is that if you want to finish a part, it quickly becomes a mush of mixed layers of paint. The best solution to work on paintings in the sparse time that I have is to either warm the painted canvas or work on two paintings at the same time, so while one is drying, I can work on the other. I was in search for which direction I actually wanted to go with my graffiti and paintings. I was looking for ways to combine acrylics with oils. After not being active on YouTube for a while, suddenly this video popped up about movie posters that immediately caught my attention. Sometimes, once in a year or several years, I have a real game changing eye opener and it appears that actually one man was responsible for all those classic movie posters and they were actually drawn and painted all by hand. If I have ever thought it was hand drawn and painted, then it must be a complete studio working on it. But no, it was Drew Struzen. Now, you could say I was fan of Drew Struzen, although unconsciously, because of all those classic movies itself, but that wasn't actually the case. In hindsight, the whole 80s thing with the video stores, hip hop, BMX and skateboarding brings back a special atmosphere. And yes, Drew was part of it, but I also like the drawing style independent of the movies. Now let's talk more about how he created his art. The way he worked was he drew the sketch with a pencil or he traced from photos and then painted over with acrylics, making use of brushes and an Iwata airbrush, after which he added details and highlights with Prismacolor pencils. This can be seen in the instructional DVD conceiving and creating the Hellboy movie poster art. This working method wasn't new, in fact it was and is used by a lot of illustrators and comic artists like Simon Bisley, Ariel Olivetti and Alex Ross. And I think it was David Grove who came up with a description of that it is more coloring a strong drawing than painting. I got that from David Finch's YouTube channel that you definitely have to go check if you want to know more about this mixed media technique. Nowadays it's often also done with Copics and pencils or gouache and pencils. Anyway, for me this discovery of Struzen using these relative sparse materials to create such appealing posters came for me at the right time. Now let's get into his life and works. First of all, besides the earlier mentioned instructional DVD of creating the Hellboy poster, there's another DVD called The Man Behind the Poster. Concerning his art, there are several books like The Art of Drew Struzen and Movie Posters by Drew Struzen. But for this video, I use this book called Oeuvre, which is a limited edition with signed art print and a print inside the book. There's also a limited edition of the art of Drew Struzen. Now let's open this book. Drew Struzen was born on March 18th in Oregon City. Here's a good description by George Lucas. Drew has the talent not only to capture the characters faithfully, but enrich them with a little grandeur. A little more glorious and more romantic than a photograph could ever convey. Here's something about his early life. Home life consisted of an endless series of moves from one town to another. This constant uprooting left Drew and his brother and sister with no friends, no attachments and very little support for building a strong internal foundation. 
Well, I remember that from Jim Morrison, whose father was some high-ranking officer, and they had to move over and over again. In high school he was doing commissions for portraits and caricatures, and at age 14 he won a national contest for the United Nations, which earned him a TV appearance. But as uh, the Struzans didn't have much money, they couldn't drive to the expo and the piece was lost. His art teacher and college led him to the Art Center College of Design in Los Angeles, where he studied illustration instead of fine arts to pay the bills. Fun fact, his most influential teacher there was Lorser Feitelson, known from the waveform on the Coca-Cola cans. That's the white, the white waveform. Other fun fact, he graduated illustration with great distinction, but was denied at the fine arts department because of his thesis not written in scholarly fashion. What's very interesting is that a few years after graduating, what really has started kind of a motion were covers for albums before making posters for all kinds of movies. Well, that's very appealing to me as a musician, of course. Here's another interesting thing. Something that I also saw him telling in this DVD that was shown in Lyon. He thought about what was conveying and how. Instead of a typical bloody poster for a horror movie, he created something that sparkled more emotion and gave it depth. So besides thinking about color values and composition, there's the matter of being able to communicate. Understanding and sympathizing with the mind and the purpose of the client is what creates a successful campaign. Here's another example where he describes making the poster for Rambo First Blood. The figure has a weapon but it is used for struggle for justice and therefore placed in the blue sky, to put it a little short. There's a lot of thoughts behind it. It's not just a tough guy with blood on his face and a weapon with a lot of fire or blood or whatever. Here's another great quote on page 16. What people don't understand is that the artist has done the artistic work with the intent it should be enjoyed emotionally. So this is what he said on the DVD. It's about conveying kind of an emotion instead of just a 2D picture. The book tells how Indiana Jones Part 2, The Temple of Doom, gave him his big break and how Drew sucked up characters to even end up shaping the teeth of a character with George Lucas's permission. As an artist and musician, I don't like to endlessly deify successful people. Often it is also a matter of knowing or working with the right people, but this quote by Steven Spielberg says something about the recognizability of Drew's work. I couldn't make an Indiana Jones movie without John Williams' score, Michael Caine's editing and Drew's movie art. Here's kind of a disclaimer. It says a definitive book isn't possible due to the fact that it is impossible to trace down all the art. Also it states, even assuming the images could be collected, a truly definitive book of all his work to date would consist of postage stamp sized images packed into about 200 uh, pages. In other words, the man was not only good, but also very productive. As a musician, this part on page 20 is especially appealing to me. Black Sabbath wanted this work for their 1973 album, Bla uh, Sabbath Bloody Sabbath, with front cover in contrast with the back. Also, Alice Cooper was a regular client. Wow, that must have been great times back then. Having Alice Cooper walking into your studio on a re uh, regular basis.
Here's quite a few other album covers he did for amongst others Jefferson Airplane, Earth, Winter Fire, Modern Jazz Quartet and more. At page 26 the movie poster start. In the text you can read the thankfulness of his art being all over the world thanks to the movie industry. But also the really hard work and effort to catch the deadlines over and over again. Well, it's impressive to see how productive this guy was.
I think it is the amount of knowledge of technique and composition that made him faster. In the instructional DVD he explains he sometimes made one poster overnight. Anyhow, this is mind blowing and inspirational learning material. Now let's go to France. So here I am in the city of Lyon. I arrived two days ago after some hassle with the trains. But now let's get to the subject. Drew Struzan and the exhibition in the museum right behind me. Mostly when visiting a solo exhibition I like to have a kind of a surprise element in it. But as this trip was quite expensive I did some research before. In this museum there will be some original art and some digigraphies. Digigraphy is a form of high quality art where you can actually see quite some detail like brush strokes and brush marks. Especially appealing to me will be the rebuilt studio of Drew Struzan. Also from an artist perspective I like to see the use of materials like acrylics and prismacolors. Finally off topic if there's one movie that made a huge impact on me skateboard wise it was Back to the Future. In some of the photos of the museum I saw the original Madrid hoverboard used in a movie. So I hope they still have it in the collection. Fingers crossed.
citizens on patrol. Cause the neighborhood folks won't take no more. They got bars on the windows, locks on the doors. Free the streets is what they'll do. They're gonna get rid of all the punks like you. They're citizens on patrol. Citizens on patrol. In an alley in a junkie named Sally. So you better go home. Leave you alone. We're citizens on patrol. So you call the cops, they won't do no good. Cause they won't even come through this neighborhood. Before we get this crime to stop, we got to grab the cops from the donut shops. Citizens on patrol.
So, sitting here on this vehicle, coming straight out of an Indiana Jones pose made by Drew Struzan, I'm going to end this visit with a short review. It was amazing to see all the artwork, the original artwork, and even larger than original prints. You could actually see a lot of detail in the works, a lot of layering, a lot of depth. Also, of course, the composition, the color use, and the use of mediums like acrylics and prismacolors. If you're in the neighborhood of Lyon, definitely go visit this museum and the exhibition. A part of the exhibition, there's a lot more to see in this museum of cinema and miniature. And you might even see the original hoverboard used in Back to the Future. For now, au revoir. Oh yes, one last message. I had a great time in Lyon, drumming at G-Dot restaurant. Doing some graffiti. And buying too much art books and other cool stuff and visiting the art museum. If you want to see more of my art and drumming, follow me on at svenimal.art or the links in the description. Thanks for watching.